Hey guys, what I'd like to do in this video is give you my final thoughts on the Poco F2 Pro. This is a flagship Android smartphone which I've been using every single day for about three and a half weeks and I truly believe that there is a good argument that this is the phone of the year. Now I'll get to that at the end of the video. Before I do so, let's look at the phone and talk about its build quality, its features and talk about battery life and the camera etc. So if I jump over to my overhead camera, you can see the Poco F2 Pro and what I would say right away is that I really do like the design and I really do like the build quality of this. You know, this has got a 6.67 inch AMOLED display. And despite that, it's quite a thin and quite a light phone. You know, there's not much of a camera lip there either. Now, it is quite a slippy phone, I will say that. And it's quite reflective with my studio lights, but the slippiness is something you do see in a lot of you know, premium Android smartphones and iPhones as well. But they do provide this case. This is the case that's thrown in the box. You get this when you buy the F2 Pro. And from a protection point of view, this isn't the best as far as it does. It doesn't have a large lip. It's exposed at the top, but it's really grippy. And it's good that they throw it in free of charge. I do like the design though. I think the quad camera layout at the back looks pretty cool as well. And I love this funky little red power button. Next to the red power button, you've got a volume rocker. You've got the headphone jack, you've got, well, we know what that is, don't we? We know what that is. And if I do this, come on, there you go. There is the front camera. Normally when you do that, you've got like special effects. I've turned those, those off, but you can make it like a little chime and change the color, color of it all, etc. When you do that, it's very easy to do. But yeah, that is the front pop-up uh, pop camera. And that's how you've got this all screen display. That's how you've got so much real estate and why the, the bezels are so thin. There's nothing else there. Normally you would get like a punch out camera or a notch or something, but the camera's up there. So all of that's gone. So at the bottom of the phone, we've got the SIM card tray. There's a slot for one SIM card on one side, another on the other side, but there is no external micro SD card slot. So what you get is what you get. This has got 128 gigabytes of storage, but there's no option to increase that storage. So if you're really a big storage guy, that you store a lot of videos or music, you might struggle with the internal storage. But I think for most people, that won't be a problem. Type-C charging, microphone, speaker. And I do mean speaker and not speakers. This has got an individual speaker. And I've not found it to be a problem watching YouTube videos or listening to podcasts or playing games or anything like that. But if you're listening to music, certainly when you get to the higher end of the, the, the volume bar there, it gets really, really tinny and the music starts to clip. So when compared to other flagship Android smartphones, the speakers here are, are a bit of a letdown and certainly one of the, the downsides of using this phone. It's not a big deal for me. You know, I, I do have Bluetooth speakers around the house that I normally use. So for me, it's not a deal breaker, but be aware that you do only have an individual speaker. Now, because of the pop-out camera, when you do a face unlock, if I do that, the camera needs to pop up. Now, I, I was initially hesitant about that because I use face unlock a lot, but it's actually not that much of a problem. You only wait like an extra half second. And the other thing is, well, the fingerprint sensor is really good. I've said many times that I'm not a big fan of on-screen fingerprint sensors. I prefer them at the back, but, this is one of the best that I've seen. It's really, really good. So the fingerprint sensor on this is absolutely excellent. The other thing that's excellent is performance. This has got a Snapdragon 865. It's got six gigabytes of memory. And there are, apparently, there's going to be another version that's got eight gigabytes of memory and DDR5X RAM, but that's not out yet. But really, performance is not an issue here. It really isn't. This is a fast experience, and I showed you that in my other video. The, the actual skin that they use here, the Poco Launcher, it's not too bad, actually. It's not too bad. I will say that this is not as bloated as, say, a Samsung phone, but it's not as clean as a Google phone. It kind of sits in the middle. They do install quite a lot of Mi apps, but they can be removed. So if you don't like them, remove them. But yeah, it's okay. It certainly wouldn't put me off buying this phone, but it's not a clean experience per se. There are a couple of other features there uh, that some people will like. Um, you know, it's all kind of in there. But I would say that across the board, this is quite a, a, a nice skin. 
you know, there's a couple of things I do like. Uh, second space is, you know, someone who was asking about as well, where you can set up a second space for someone else and it's effectively like a second phone. Um, but um, the other thing I like here is that it splits all the apps into categories. These are all things that can be replaced um, when you, you know, apply a second launcher. But you can see here, two spaces, one device. This is another option and it's now switching. So there we go. I've created a second space on the phone and now you can switch between them. So I stopped that second space feature from setting up, but there are a lot of cool features like that in the settings area. And there are a lot of apps that me does install as well. Some of which you'll like, some of which you won't like, but all the ones that I've tried, you do seem to be able to uninstall them. So I don't think that's going to be a problem for anyone. The whole experience is fast and it's user friendly. I do think that most people will like the display as well. You've got a thin bezel all the way around the phone. It's an all screen display. There's no camera getting in the way here and it's a large 6.67 inch AMOLED display. Now this display is only, only 60 Hertz. Now I say only because a lot of the higher end Android smartphones, the expensive ones, are offering 90 Hertz and 120 Hertz. And those higher refresh rates do offer a better experience. They're more fluid, they're smoother, and it does make it feel like it's a faster phone. So I'm all for faster refresh rates, but I will say that I haven't noticed this being 60 Hertz being an issue for me. 60 Hertz is still good in the majority of cases. I realize that, you know, if you're gaming, if you're doing, you know, certain other things, a higher refresh rate is good. Or even if you just want to have a high refresh rate all the time, it gives you a more fluid experience. But I found this to be a fast phone and I don't think having a 60 Hertz display is a problem. I also think that I don't mind it being a 60 Hertz display because it helps the battery life. And these high refresh rate phones, when you're using 90 Hertz or 120 Hertz, it really does burn the battery up at a faster rate. So the battery life is affected by that. And battery life is one area where this phone excels. It's got a 4,700 milliamp battery and it doesn't have the fastest charger on the market. I realize that most phones still offer 15 watt, 18 watt charges, uh, charging, but there are Android phones out there that offer 65 watts. This offers 30 watts. And when I was charging at 30 watts, 30.5 watts, even with all the no notifications and Wi-Fi, et cetera, on, I was able to charge us from zero to 100% in an hour and five minutes. And that's incredible when you consider the size of this battery. And battery life is excellent. It's almost twice as long as what I was getting with the X50 Pro from Realme. I'm getting about a day and a half to two days of usage, which is incredible. You know, I'm using YouTube, I'm browsing the web, I'm using social media, I'm listening to podcasts. I'm a complete power user that's using my phone too much and I'm getting a day and a half to two days. I've even got more than two days sometimes when I wasn't using my phone much that day. So battery life is absolutely excellent. And it's one of the best selling features of this phone. Another reason that someone will opt for a flagship Android phone rather than a mid-range Android smartphone is the camera. In fact, the camera is normally what people gravitate towards when they're spending more money on a phone. And against mid-range phones, this will smash every mid-range phone out the market, out the water, sorry. But with regards to other flagship phones, I think that to summarize, I would say that the front camera is average compared to other smartphones in, in the higher end but the main camera st stands shoulder to shoulder with those phones. So as I was saying earlier, you've got that front uh, pop-out camera. It's really good and I do like the fact that it's hidden that it gives you this all-screen display, but it's a 20 megapixel sen sensor and you've got this fixed focal length. There's no ultra wide angle mode. There's nothing like that. There's no optical in uh, image stabilization. There's no zooming options. You're kind of limited with what you can do. I will say, you know, for photographs, the front camera is pretty good. It seemed quite good in low light as well. But from a video perspective, I was a little bit disappointed. You know, the microphone in this is not great. And without the stabilization, there was a lot of situations where this wasn't great. And, you know, even filming inside, when I was filming a, a clip inside for a video last week, I used the front camera here and the light just kept flickering on and off. I didn't have any lights on. It was just coming from, you know, natural daylight. And it was just kind of strange. So from a video perspective, the, the front camera is disappointing for me. But from a photo perspective, I think most people will be happy with it. But the main camera is significantly better. It really is better. If you look at the stats here, you can see the quad camera system. It's got a two megapixel depth sensor, 30 megapixel ultra wide, 64 megapixel, what they call a main camera, but it's the wide angle. And then you've got a five megapixel tele macro sensor. And 
you know, if you look at um, a lot of these comparison websites and review websites or look at smartphones and, and YouTubers as well, they, 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 they have to kind of nitpick when, when you're comparing a $900 phone to a $1,000 phone, etc. And they start nitpicking and they start zooming in to saturation and all these different things. But in my opinion, this quad camera system is excellent. I was really happy with photographs in the daytime and in low light and nighttime. And video quality is a lot better. You know, the front camera is quite restrictive. You've got 1080p at 30 frames per second or 720p as well. But you can't zoom. There's no stabilization. But in the back camera, you've got 720p, you've got 1080p, 30 um, 60 frames per second. You've got 4K, 30, 60 frames per second. You've got 8K as well. It's more of an experimental feature, but 8K is available in this phone. And it's not just the resolutions. You know, you've got ultra steady mode. You've got better stabilization. There's always a little bit of warping at the edge of videos with stabilization, but across the board, I was really impressed with the video quality in the daytime and at nighttime. Stabilization was good. There's a lot of resolution modes there. And the back camera is excellent. Now, I'm not going to say this is the best main camera system of any phone this year, but I don't think this is too far behind either. I think this should definitely be in the conversation with a lot of the, a lot of the other top of the range smartphones coming out this year. So the main camera system is excellent for photographs and videos. The front camera is good for photos, but for videos, I was a little bit disappointed. But again, it depends what you're comparing it to. Again, I mean, I'm guilty of nitpicking phones as well when, when you're, you know, reviewing phones and looking at it. So... I've showed you what I've liked. You know, I do like the build quality. The speakers aren't great. Um, the front camera is it's a, it's a cool little feature, but it's certainly not groundbreaking, the front camera, from a flagship point of view. So why was I talking about this as being the phone of the year? Price. That's it, price. Now, I've said this many times. I believe that too many of these review websites and review uh, YouTubers, etc., they're not talking about price. And I think that when you're talking about the phone of the year and you're talking about all these phones and comparing them, I don't think it's fair to compare a $400 or $500 phone against a $1,200 phone and then say the $1,200 phone is the phone of the year. I think you have to factor price into the equation, certainly when most people who buy smartphones are factoring price into the equation. Now, if you um, look at this, this is a uh, GearBest, and you can see it's selling for four hundred and seventy dollars on GearBest and Banggood, which in UK, um, Great British pounds is three hundred and eighty-two pounds. I paid slightly more because I bought it at launch. I paid four hundred and five, so you can see it's dropped in price. But a few weeks ago, this was on sale on AliExpress for only three hundred and twenty-eight pounds sixty-five, which works out at four hundred and four dollars US in today's money, four hundred bucks for a flagship Android smartphone. And that is why I would say that this should be contender for phone of the year. There's a lot of Android smartphones that give you similar performance from a browsing and gaming point of view. There's a lot of phones that offer a similar camera experience, similar camera quality. But a lot of those phones sell for $800, $900, $1,000. This is selling at 400 bucks or $470. You know, you'll get it in between that range. There's deals every day. And, and that is why I truly believe this should be considered as phone of the year. This is not a perfect phone. There's a lot of things I like about it, but, you know, it's maybe a little bit bloated software-wise. I don't like the front uh, selfie camera video-wise, the microphone quality, the speaker. There's a few things that I don't like about this. Certainly, there's a few things that they could be improved upon. But when you factor in price into this whole equation, this is just excellent. This is just an absolute bargain of a phone. And this is selling cheaper than some mid-range phones from other companies such as Samsung. So if you want to bring price into the equation, this has to be considered as phone of the year. But if you want to, you know, if, if budget is, is not a problem, if price is not something you're even considering, then obviously some of these other phones on the market, even from me, the Mi 10 is better than this. But some of those other phones will beat this phone when you start comparing like for like. But you have to consider price and you have to factor it into the equation. And that's why I do think that the Poco F2 Pro has to be considered as one of the phones of the year, despite the fact there's a few areas that, you know, I wish it was improved. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've kind of summarized my thoughts in this video, but please do refer back to my older videos. I did an unboxing. I did a charging test. I looked at the camera as well. I went out all day and I looked at the cameras. 
And I also did a detailed 40 minute ish video where I showed you the phone, I showed you the user interface and all that. So if you're seriously considering this phone, check out those videos for a more in depth review. But I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hopefully I've helped you made a, make a decision as to whether this uh, phone is for you or not. There are some other cool, uh, cheap, affordable Android flagship, uh, flagship smartphones out there in the market, but there's just something about this. I think the ov overall package is just excellent. Certainly when you consider, you know, below 500 bucks, it's just, the overall package is just excellent. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you've enjoyed this series of videos for the Poco F2 Pro. If you've got any questions, please do leave a comment below, but stay tuned. As always, I do have more videos coming. So until then, take care.